Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the five minute read maker. If you're watching this on YouTube, would you go ahead and click subscribe for me and uh, even notify? And that way you'll always know when I drop a new episode. And also it will help YouTube to help other people to find my channel and therefore to become better read makers and happier musicians. So thank you so much for that. Today I want to talk about this machine. It is a profiling machine for oboe reeds. It is a KGE machine. And I'm talking about it for two reasons. One, I'm just going to walk through the whole process of making a read on it um, for any educational value that that holds for you. And two, I'm trying to sell this machine. So I'm going to talk to you all about the value I find in it and the maybe inconveniences that I sometimes find. And if this feels interesting or useful to you, please feel free to reach out to me. This video is airing Thursday, August 25th, 2022. And if you're seeing this and the description below the video doesn't say it's already been sold, then please feel free to reach out to me because that is what I'm trying to do. It is not useful for me in my workflow anymore. But I do think it's a valuable machine. And if you're watching this and you see in the description that the machine has sold, I think there's still value in this video because I'm going to talk through what the machine can do and what it cannot do and like just how long it does take to make a read on it. So moving forward, without further ado, the KGE profiling machine. Okay. Machine looks like this. It's got this guy here with a blade right there and a roller here. And this is the American, here we go. Right there you see the American template for a, an American style reed. It's got a little placky thing here, which is where the uh, reed goes. And this little device to hold the reed in place. And you can see, I think, that it's got this little sticky uppy thing here that is really clever, I actually really like it. Um, as I as I set this down without a reed on it, um, this little standy up doohickey holds the blade up off of the plaque, so we're not damaging the blade. There's no contact right here between the blade and the plaque, so no harm can befall this machine. And when I'm ready to actually use it, I just raise the little guard down here and then that will bend all the way down and then it just lies down and I can use this usefully. In order to use it, I can start from a blank. This is a scraped, uh, excuse me, an unscraped blank, totally sealed. And what I do need to do is do a quick long scrape on the reed. Now, as you know, I'm aggressive with my long scrape, but I'm going to try to be a little less aggressive here as I just set this up. And all I'm doing is taking off enough bark so that I have a little bit of flexibility with this reed. And I've been soaking this blank for probably five minutes at this point. I don't want to use a, a dry blank for this. So I've scraped bark off and I'll clip this blank open. Now, the machine appears to be set up so that if you clip your reed down to like 70, if you clip it to length and then insert your reed onto this plaque up to the line right there, it's going to deliver your finished reed with finished proportions. Honestly, this does not work for me. I need a long tip to function with. I, I have not succeeded in getting this to be a finished enough read that I can cope with the short tip, even though I'm going to clip ultimately down to 70 or so. This is something that you will have seen before in others of my videos. So I, I don't do that. Instead, I clip long as I normally would. This uh, read is probably 72 millimeters now. And when I go ahead and insert it onto the little plaque, I can get up to the line. Perhaps you can't see the line. Let me zoom. 
if you can see that there is a little etched in line right there. That's where they would suggest that you stop shoving the reed, but I'm gonna shove it further. And you can see maybe that I've placed just the tiniest pencil mark right there. That represents where my heart, where the heart is going to start and fall. So because I want control of that, I really am paying attention to that metric. And if I had measured already on my read, which I have not, um, I would, you know, put my 65 right around there and then I would make sure that the 65 lined up with the mark on my plaque. But again, I didn't do that. Then I'm going to use this little device to hold the read on there and unzoom so that you can see the process. And bring this in. And now uh, I'll rotate it this way for my ease of use. I'm just going to start sort of at the tip area and begin to scrape a little bit. The machine doesn't scrape as I go forward, uh, as I go backward. It only scrapes as I go forward. I'm not using a ton of pressure and I'm using my left hand up here to rotate the thing back and forth so that I end up profiling every bit of the tip. Not using a ton of pressure, but if the cane seems like it needs me to push harder, I do. And once I've kind of got the tip organized, I know my camera is shaking. I can't help it. It's attached to the table that I'm profiling on. Then I'm backing up. This profiler takes almost nothing from the heart, at least with the quantity of cane that I scraped off in my long scrape. But it does take out some from the back. And I try to be a little bit careful because just like when you're scraping with your knife in the back, if you're overly aggressive, you can get a catch that just like rips right through the heart. And of course we don't want that. So I'm not pressing very hard at first, but by the time I finish here, now I'm going the whole length of the reed and I'm putting full pressure on and getting, going all the way down till it bottoms out. Now, this is what I have at this point. Um, and I will show it to you off the machine, of course, but it looks like a reed with a nice long tip. I will pull this guy off, pull the reed off and rotate it around. Do the same thing on this side. I'm pushing it past the line so that my little pencil mark is right around where I want my heart to be, the top of my heart to be. I lock it in with the little thing here. And then I go back up. Tip first. Is it essential to do the tip first? I don't know. It just feels like that's the delicate part and I want to make sure that I do it with some care. I absolutely welcome. If you are a person who uses a profiler regularly, if, especially if you use this kind of machine, this KGE profiler regularly, and you have uh, a bone to pick with anything I'm saying or doing here, please pe feel free to hop in the comments. I welcome corrections or observations or criticisms of what I'm doing. And it's not gonna change my mind about this machine. Whatever you have to say about it. Okay, so now I've taken off all of the cane that I'm gonna take off. Um, and I just basically profiled until the device bottomed out. Now, pulling this off and noticing that I do have some nice thinness. There's a little bit of like raggediness up here, but that's okay. And you can see that I'm very gapped 
at the side. And this is because of how far I've had to shove it onto the plaque. Um, I have found that this will uh, settle down when I re-soak, which is what I'm about to do. But if I just beep it now, right? It's got a real ratty crow because it's so split at the sides and because it's so long, but it does beep and crow. And you, I have not touched it with a knife other than to uh, do the initial long scrape. So right now I'm going to dip it and give it a second to like heal itself. And I will point out that on this machine, um, there is a, a gauge here that you can use, I believe, to adjust the finished thickness of the reed. This thing here adjusts the tension of this screw, uh, excuse me, of this spring that lives here. And my understanding from the website which I will link in the um, in the video notes, is that this has some impact on how deeply we scrape out the back of the reed. I'm not sure that I understand why, but that's what I have seen. There are adjustments here in this area um, that you can turn with a little hex key. You can turn with a hex key. This just comes all the way out. And there's another hex key adjustment here. And do I remember at this exact instant what those all do? I do not. But there are a series of short, wordless, sort of helpful videos on the website of the maker that describe what impact these have. You know, you can lengthen the tip, you can lengthen the back, you can lengthen the overall scrape. This up here, sorry, I'm going to get this replanted so it, I'm not worried about the blade. There. Um, this guy right here can be just easily unscrewed with your fingers, and this, uh, I've got it at the longest possible setting because I have a pretty long scrape on my reed, but expanding these expanders will give you a shorter overall scrape in the reed. So it's quite customizable. There's a lot of different things you can do and I have not explored them all thoroughly because my basic problem with the machine is that what I just accomplished on it, I can do faster by hand. This doesn't save me time. It feels like energy sapping and uncreative to me. So shoving it aside for a moment, here is this read that I just made. And you can see that after just this short time of soaking, the sides have closed up again. So I'm not overly concerned about how like far on I have to shove it. Here's the beep and the crow. I'll put a plaque in and show you what exactly I would do now to bring this along to be an actual finished read. If I weren't trying to finish it right now, I would just call this a day one. I would put it in my day one case and finish it tomorrow, but I will finish it here. What I notice is that my tip, like the transition from the heart into the tip is pretty nice, but the tip itself is not as much thinner on the side and thinner at the corner as I would want it to be. So I'm gonna do that first of all, just sort of starting at the gutter and scraping up to the corner. It's my little like petting the kitty maneuver. And I am getting some good thickness right up here. I have to be fair and say that if I hadn't shoved this reed on as far as I had, if I hadn't demanded the long tip that I have here, it is possible that we wouldn't have all of that extra thickness at the top. I'm asking the machine to do something that it was a little tiny bit not designed to do. But basically, if I just take care of sides and corners of the tip, and you notice I'm not doing my big patented scoop and curl, I'm just sort of brushing cane off. So if you are a person who sort of fears that scoop and curl, 
you don't have to do it with this machine. Okay, so I've just done that. And now let me see what I have. It's quite a low crow, so I can clip. Which makes sense because again, we're 72 millimeters long, right? Again. Again. One more. I'm not sure I'm at a C yet. I think I probably am not. But I can feel as I put bring this up to my lips that I've clipped into thickness, which is just, you know, again, that, that my scraping hasn't fully... Ha hasn't brought this area of the reed to be as thin as the tip ultimately needs to be. But again, I'm not scooping and curling. I'm just taking a little more off especially at the sides and the corners. And if I had not, um, if I had set this entire machine up to go a little bit thinner, I think it would have taken more out of the heart than I want. So the work that I'm doing at the tip continues to be essential work, but you'll notice I've scraped nothing south of the rooftop. That's getting to be a better crow. I can feel in my mouth that the thickness at the tip has gone away. And that's just me scraping. One more clip. Now I am at just over 71. So, hey, maybe one more clip. And now I can put it on the ovo. And that is pretty okay, right? It's a reed, I can play on it, and I have not scraped anything south of the rooftop. All I did was thin, like, thin the tip, paying careful attention to the sides and corners without doing my complicated scoop and curl. And then I clipped back substantially. Could I have saved time if I trusted this machine to form the entire tip? Maybe. But this is the way that I'm comfortable making reads and making reads from this machine. To be clear, I am... 16 minutes into this video right now and yes it's slower when i talk <laughs> but but i could have day one scraped that read in probably two minutes or less and for me this machine is not a saver of time but for you it might be right? To be able to get this consistent result in only 16 minutes with less danger than my usual technique might be really beneficial. So to sum up, this machine doesn't have a lot of value to me, but it might to you if getting to that day one scrape very consistently, without the danger of a scoop and curl, without having to like hack away all of that cane yourself, if that feels desirable, and if probably 10 minutes, honestly, is a savings of time for you in creating that day one scrape, this machine might be for you. There's a reason that these profilers have become very popular lately. Um, both these KGE models and the Reads and Stuff profilers, which I don't have experience with, but which I believe to be quality machines, they're useful. They make a consistent result. They make a read that can actually work. And if that sounds fun to you, please feel free to reach out to me. I am offering this machine. It is used. It is as is. I'm not touching any of the settings from what I just showed you. You can find me at my website, JanetIngle.com. You can reach out to me via email, Janet at JanetIngle.com. A comment on this uh, video. 
I probably won't catch in time uh, as a as an indication of interest, but I do welcome your comments on this video. If you have questions about the machine, if you have comments or observations from your own use of such a machine, I would love to, like my audience would love to hear about that. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.